Hi there, this uh, video is all about looking at traditional and contemporary management um, strategies. Um, I've got a general title here saying the evaluation of management strategies. It's going to take a series of uh, lessons to fully answer that. So what we're going to be looking at really is those different uh, management strategies and then start looking how we can categorize them into temporary and then traditional. And then we're going to look at um, why we manage ecosystems and how we do it and the attitudes that underpin all these different types of man management strategies. So some um, quite complicated um, terminology um, and some of the, the topics I'm going to discuss in the next few um, lessons. So let's see if we can crack on. Um, so first of all, when we look at management of ecosystems, like we've said before, there is no one measure of successful ecosystem management. Now, I've got a picture here at the bottom of my road during the floods um, where we had Tugger Lakes flooding uh, Bertieville. Um, a great example of um, probably a management strategy that didn't go too well. Um, obviously, the Central Coast Council believed that the entrance channel should be just left alone to allow for natural change. And as a result, we've had this um, deluge of rain, which then led to flooding. So not a great um, uh, sort of value to have in this um, example. So. There's no one measure of successful ecosystem management, and you've got to have that in the back of your mind all the time when we look at ecosystem management and protection. Um, any success must be looked at over a long period of time just to make sure it's not part of the normal function of an ecosystem. As I said before, um, we can have populations of certain species that live in an ecosystem, you know, sort of expand a lot. Um, and this causes problems and that's natural and that's okay. So that's why we've got to look at ecosystem management over time. Um, we um, can look at a, a whole range of different things. We can focus on the species numbers and stability of populations. Um, that's pretty good when we don't have a benchmark of what the ecosystem was like before and after protection. And if we don't have a benchmark, then what we do, we start having an audit. So we start counting um, species of animals and plants that are there. Um, a common feature of management schemes is obviously questioning the environmental impact of humans in terms of sustainability. So when we talk about management strategies, contemporary, traditional, we've got to have all of this information in the back of our heads. Okay, these are the management strategies. So we've got the reasons and values that underpin management strategies. These are some of our plans of attack. We've got sort of four, four um, main management approaches. They are preservation, conservation, utilization, utilization, exploitation, and then undermining those approaches are the following attitudes. Uh, radical environmentalism, which is, you know, um, ecosystem management is important. It's the main thing that humans should do. Um, utilitarianism is, you know, continue to use um, the resources uh, for human gain. Stewardship is, you know, still using them, but in a managed way. And then romanticism comes around from um, the, the start of the Industrial Revolution. It was a, um, a bit of a more of a literacy sort of era where it was focused on the individual over people coming together as groups and factories and so on. So it's this idea that humans have lost their link with the environment and need to reconnect back to that. So basically, you've got those four approaches that are quite straightforward and easy and underneath those approaches we've got that attitude and that really affects the management approach like preservation is sort of is undermined by um sorry underpinned by stewardship conservation would be radical environmentalism um 
utilization is utilitarianism and then exploitation will be the same romanticism will probably come under preservation conservation that type of thing so that's where that comes um, through so having that plan of attack is based on those four approaches and you have those attitudes which sort of drive them now when we're well, we're really trying to do is looking at how humans can minimize the impact on ecosystems and there's sort of several ways we can do that exclusion so don't use the area full stop we can do action and that can vary in degrees no action is a form of action just like that example of the central coast council and the entrance channel um restoration so restore it back to how it was uh, rehabilitation so um, extra planting of plants to secure um, a river bank that might have collapsed or uh, being eroded by rabbit rabbits um, creating burrows and then replacement you know sort of putting something new in um, education is also really important um, to get people knowing and learning about um, the ecosystem and then obviously designing ecosystems as well um, and then legislation having law that protects ecosystems at risk now when we um, look at management strategies um, the way in which ecosystems are managed are always changing they are always changing like we said there's no one right um, method and it depends on time and we can change our management strategy all the time and um, the different management strategies reflect attitude of people with the environment and that's why we talked about those plans of attack with those um, attitudes um, that pushes environmental management um, obviously in politics the way we live has certainly changed not before the industrial revolution people were very aware of their natural surroundings and lived in sync hence why our population was steady within the start of the industrial revolution we started using the environment so much so that our population just expanded um, and we're trying to reconnect that and that's only become because our reflection of the environment learning about the environment and that's having a, an impact on the way we behave and look at ecosystem management if we looked at ecosystem management say 30 40 years ago it'd probably be you know not here or it'd be very small amounts of it um so yeah that's what we mean by changing in management strategies um, when we talk about ecosystem management we also look at technology technology is really really important and technology can help ecosystems at risk in two ways directly um, literally helping a species and being able uh, to withstand change so I've got their modifying crops that can withstand drought which would be brilliant particularly in some countries in Africa and also in Australia as well and then indirectly so by improving the efficiency of the way we burn coal in the power station is helping the environment because we are burning the coal more efficiently which means there's less um, pollution in the air so that's what we mean by ind indirectly and as technology is always changing and advancing stuff like biotechnology might have the ability to bring back species that were once um, extinct which is really really important and that's a, a new area of technology um, but of course there are all, all, always going to be these ethical is issues um, if a species has naturally died out why should we sort of play god and allow these species back so um, quite contentious um, modern technology in ecosystem management um, our attitudes um, economically have changed um, because um, you know resources are only important when we're using them um, for example uh, before sort of like nuclear technology uranium was useless therefore it didn't have an economic value but when we are using uranium more and more particularly for power then obviously the supply and demand goes up 
um, and puts a value on it. So it's really important in many cases, particularly an ecosystem at risk comes down to a question of opportunity cost. Is there that supply and demand? And if there is, that increases the economic attitude and they're, they're always changing. And when we're looking for, you know, renewable energy, then we still need to think about the ecosystems at risk where we get those materials to build the solar panels for. So that's what we mean by changing economic attitude. And then our um, environmental um, attitude as well is really important. We are doing um, more and more education about the environment. We are using the environment more than just the resource for enjoyment, for leisure. And I think more and more people's attitude towards the environment is increasing where we do want to become more protectionist. Um, we want to preserve and conserve what we've got for future generations. And that goes back to um, the management approaches and the attitudes towards that. I think it's becoming more and more accepted in society that people care about the environment. And even so, um, we've got green politics, you know, we have the Green Party in Australia that really pushes environmental change and protection. And that's what we mean by all this protection um, for for the environment. Um, so overall, that's the end of the video. There's a lot of information there. We've talked about, you know, management strategies. We talked about the, you know, sort of attitudes and the plan of action and those attitudes that have changed. So um, this video has taken a lot of information in about those attitudes. And really, um, when we look at evaluating them, which you're gonna have to do, um, it does always change and it's a very, very um, hard thing to do because like, you know, there's not one right way of protecting the environment. All right, well, that's the end of the video. Thanks for um, watching. Make sure you're making your Cornell notes. Um, I'm going to put this on their puzzle as well. So make sure you're answering the questions and make sure you can use those questions in your Cornell notes. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe my channel. Um, yeah, I'm going to catch you soon. Thanks.